Now let's take a look at the three significant features of IT configured societies. The first one is global to many scope, like many to many connection here. Uh, we can ha send messages to many people and it is a multi-directional platform. We can, uh, like, uh, as you see here, what you have is synchronous and asynchronous communication platforms, synchronous and one-to-one -one instant messaging, voice calls, whatever, texting. And if it is asynchronous, uh, you can send emails, for example, letters, whatever. And one-to-many is uh, what you have here as videos, like uh, you pro broadcast in uh, uh, live uh, recordings on YouTube or te television or something and asynchronous ones are done with Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn and whatever you can reach them in this way. So it has the most uh, one of the most important features of the IT configured societies is it's as global to many scope. Uh, this is the most significant event about the global to many to many scope of the uh, uh, property of the IT societies. The, the, in 1994 in Phoenix, lawyers uh, who Lawrence Carter and Martha Siegel sent an email to promote their immigration services. They sent this email to 9,000 news groups. They were using news groups for communication that time. And it resulted in an advertisement in cyberspace, like, uh, I mean, uh, uh, and it, it, uh, it has made it to news as well. But in the end, even uh, if, uh, uh, I mean, they were accused about this and they got into uh, some trouble, but they get many clients that do it, that they do it again. Uh, so this is the first case of spam uh, case, maybe apply or take interest in media in 1994 directly uh, on the internet. This is the first spam, well-known spam issue, historic one. Uh, as of 2000, the circulating emails, uh, when we consider the circulating emails, 8% of them were spam. And by 2009, 90% of uh, the emails became, became spam as well. Billions of dollars per year are wasted because of the, I mean, energy wasted and uh, because it's it is very low cost promotion method it is about uh, 100 times cheaper than traditional mail and the company profits even when if one out of uh, 100,000 email recipients buy the products it's crazy you see one purchase for this much of spam emails worth the effort so that's why people are relying on spam a lot. Today, uh, I'm sure we w w the circulating email, at least half of them are still spam, although there are a lot of measures, measures taken against, against them. Most common type of the uh, attack is for spamming is dictionary attack, like to find out the email addresses. They use all the combinations of dictionary words. If there is no bones pack, it means that it's a valid address and they add it to the uh, valid mail lists. Spam spoofing is another method. We will look at these such methods in chapter six, digital order part, but uh, let's just introduce them. They are doing spam spoofing for this purpose. It is easy to do, difficult to trace and impossible to prevent. Uh, as you see, this one is like uh, pretending that the messages coming from are this one. So they are sending lots of messages to this one and these are just uh, sending uh, email email addresses are returning to the victim and also the if they want to remove themselves from the list they are returning to victim address as well spam filters today are blocking more than 1 billion messages per day and uh, this is a, again a problem or let's say ongoing problem in tufts university 
uh, they found out that the students were hiring their computers for $20 a month for spamming. I mean, uh, spam, uh, spammers, they're hiring, hiring their addresses for that. Spammers also buy spam screening softwares and uh, align themselves against them like they apply instead of body text messages they embed the their promotions into images especially pornographic images here we can conclude that direct email is moral because communication as we say communication by definition it must be two-way otherwise it is not fair we need to understand who is communicating us it shouldn't be hidden i mean by means of morality and for fighting spam uh, the proposed solutions to spam em, uh, epidemic is uh, for these are the measures uh, targeted for direct marketers. They should require an uh, an explicit opt-in of uh, subscribers to email lists. Uh, they should, uh, I mean, they uh, the subscribers should agree to be in their email list. Otherwise, they shouldn't be sent emails, and they should require labels on their advertising like uh, if you're sending an email in the subject area it should be uh, showing that it is an advertisement by some means okay look this is an advertisement uh, email or something like that and you can also add cost to every sent email but that is problematic because it can result in, in hijacking problem suppose that you uh, say that every mail you sent is uh, this much of sense or something but if you, if your uh, computer is compromised then you will have or account is compromised then you can have a, a, I mean unpleasant bill in the end so it's not applicable at all and the other one is banning unsolicited email I mean unwanted like uh, we can explain this as undesired unwanted undesired emails like they did uh, for junk faxes in 1960s they banned them and they, this can also well, it's not easy to ban them of course you can ban them that's why uh, united states of america uh, passed a law for this the controlling uh, the assault of non-solicited pornography and marketing uh, act signed by Bush in uh, 2004 what they are doing is to regulate this platform to reduce spam for marketers and they say that emails emails sent by businesses should be categorized as the transactional or relationship email messages as you see within the company okay in the businesses and the commercial email messages but only to subscribed people and for the unsolicited commercial messages, if you're sending, if a company is sending unsolicited commercial messages to unsubscribers here, other than these ones, to uh, all people here, it should have these properties here. The details must be given. There should be no disguise about the company. It, is, it should be open. For example, your postal address, whatever, should be clear. And there should be a clear opt-out mechanism out of the list. And it should be an internet-based opt-out mechanism, not by fax or postal address. You need to send something. And if it is a sex sexually explicit advertisement, these should hold plus, in, as an additional, there should be a warning about that it is an explicit material as well. Like uh, in the subject, you will say that, yeah, okay, it's an advertisement and it is also plus 18 as well, blah, blah. Okay, like something like this, the, the receivers should be warned. That's the idea about of the Can Spam Act of 2003 here. Now, it has been... Uh, uh, hardly criticized that in fact it is a you can spam act because uh, the opt-out is quite risky well, it means that when you're trying to get out of out of a list not only you reveal that it is a valid address but it is an active address as well plus active 
because you you are reacting back uh, like uh, remove me from this list this means that you are reading there not only read it you are active as well you're just revealing it making yourself a more vulnerable vulnerable target in this situation and what happened in the end the descriptive subject in spam is in 2004 was uh, like 14 uh, percent roughly in 2004 but it dropped to uh, six percent in 2006 plus they couldn't do anything about the unsolicited mails coming from coming outside the united states so it didn't help anyway that's the problem then uh, around the same times the emergence of spam like uh, the uh, i mean instant message uh, spams uh, had become popular what is the main problem here the author asks the main problem here is the problem in design the uh, email uh, or the communication protocol hasn't been designed uh, to prevent uh, that it could be exploited this way uh, so, I mean, within this structure, no, whatever you do, it is almost impossible to prevent spam 100%. Uh, it's impossible, but you can uh, block them to a degree. As of 2020, as of this year, about 55% of email traffic is uh, spam emails.